Mark Rogers TV, just a few minutes after USC upset at the Coliseum against the Washington Huskies, 17 to 12. And yes, because of the balance and the strength of the Pac-12, is it possible for a team to lose two games? And especially if they're early games and recover and get to the college football playoff. Yes, it is possible. But this USC team has other issues. The college football playoff and even a Pac-12 championship at this point out of range, should be out of thought, out of mind. They have issues fundamentally within this football team, and it starts at the top with Steve Sarkeesian. This guy has never won at any level on a big stage, and he's been given the keys at USC. And thus far, the returns are not positive. We understand the scholarship productions of recent years. We understand that maybe this team isn't quite up to what the capacity of the program um, and the potential of the program is under full strength. But scholarship production's over. This is a very talented offense. We see it all over the field. Playmakers on the outside, strong running game, five offensive line returning starters from last season, and one of the most uh, efficient quarterbacks in college football, if not one of the very best, certainly one of the top 10. And again, efficiency, if not superstar NFL type talent in Cody Kessler. But it's Washington who dominated the line of scrimmage most of this night, the front seven on defense. We saw it going all the way back to week one where the offense looked horrendous, especially in the first half against Boise State. You saw the front seven dominate the Broncos, especially in the second half. And right then I thought, well, this Washington team, they're not going to win championships, but they're going to make life difficult in the Pac-12. And they did so tonight at the LA Coliseum. So if we pick it up going into the fourth quarter, so Washington pulled off the trick play, the halfback pass or the wide receiver pass, uh, for the touchdown to take the lead over USC at 10 to 6 after trailing 6 to 3 at halftime. And Washington had the field position. They moved it out to midfield. Jake Browning pinned USC deep. And then Washington took over after the USC punt when, again, Washington stymied the Trojans and set up field position at the 50. Washington drove it 50 yards, scored the touchdown, make it 17 to 6. Okay, USC up to that point was one for th one for 11 on third down, but they got a few breaks. They got the roughing the passer and the ejection from Victor, who will miss the first half against Oregon. That set up USC in good shape. Ronald Jones got the football on three consecutive carries, and he looked impressive. Highly recruited running back. Coming out of high school, eight carries, 65 yards. He scores the touchdown after ripping off runs of 15 and 23 yards. And this is where USC lost the game. They took control of the line of scrimmage. They gave it to their five veteran offensive linemen up front, and they churned out the rushing yardage, and they took control of the line of scrimmage. And really, USC had little issues running the ball, at least consistency, not popping for big plays, but consistently ran the ball. Trey Madden, 17 carries for a buck 20. We mentioned Jones at eight for 65. If you take away the sack yardage from Cody Kessler, 34 USC rushing attempts for 215 on the ground. They were running the ball. They just ran it down the Huskies' throats. So what did they do the next time they had the ball trailing 17 to 12? It went three and out, and they threw it three times. Three consecutive passes after you just ran it down their throats. Football can be a complicated game if you want to make it a complicated game. It can also be to your advantage if you're that smart play calling and need to be. At least run it on first down. You just slammed it down their throats. Don't make it overcomplicated. And that was under the five-minute mark. So that was a key, key drive in this game after USC had gotten the stadium at least a pulse going at the LA Coliseum and had the momentum. But three consecutive passes, one short completion, had the punt. On the next uh, series, they also went to the passing game. Cody Kessler, only 16 for 29 on this night for a buck 56 and two interceptions. I'm not going to make a complete analysis of his passing performance 
because you can't see on television downfield, but it appeared as though guys were not getting open. It also appeared at times that he was rushing the throw, was getting jittery in the pocket. He took a bit of a pounding on this night and in the fourth quarter did not hang in the pocket and deliver the football. Also had some drop passes by the USC running backs coming out of the backfield that could have been decent gainers. The play of the night, uh, to close it out at least, on a third and five with USC again after the missed field goal on the 45-yarder that could have put them in really good position to get the ball back, not have to drive it all the way for six. 45-yarder missed, came up just shy, so it was still a 17-12 game. So Washington in good shape could have played a conservative, run the ball three times, punted, given USC the long field to have to drive all the way for the touchdown. Again, not the field goal, but the touchdown. That would have been very understandable on Chris Peterson's part. Instead, on third and five, they put the ball game in the hands of their freshman quarterback who threw the beautiful slant pass. Jadon Mickens got in front of the defensive back, out positioned him for the football ball game, completion on the third and five, and USC was dead. Two losses for the Trojans after losing to Stanford a couple of weeks ago, 41 31. Washington, I do not expect them to challenge Oregon and Stanford, although they've got a date with the Ducks next week. We shall see. Uh, the Huskies do move on to three and two overall, one and one uh, in the conference, and USC has lost a second game. Let's take them out of the running right now. No, it's not an impossibility. We saw a two loss team win the Pac-12 South in Arizona last year. It could happen again. But USC has already lost to Stanford and Washington, two teams that you would figure at home, although it's not the greatest of home field advantage when you see empty seats all over the L.A. Coliseum. But USC still has very difficult games upcoming against Oregon, Utah, Cal, UCLA, Arizona. And three consecutive games. Listen to this. At 3-2, and two, USC is staring at Notre Dame, Utah, and Cal. Could the Trojans actually be 3-5 and five in a few weeks? The USC situation under Sark is not pretty right now. The talent sure is pretty, but the results are ugly. Would love to hear from you on Washington and USC right here on Mark Rogers TV.